Alrighty, uh, good morning. This is the September 17th meeting of the State Board of Education's Outreach and Advocacy Committee. We only have two agenda items today, unless people have more. Um, and I know we have two representatives who are on their way. Um, but our first is basically to review um, the constituent, what is it, the constituent feedback form and uh, see um, how or think, determine how we want to use that information. Um, and then last year, the State Board of Education agreed to do a parent advisory committee biannual check-in. Um, so just start some planning about what that might look like and Representative Gazoy leads that work. So um, we will start with, and I'll put in the chat, the um, feedback form. Um, and we only have received two pieces of feedback, but more or less, like this is, a, I guess, a general discussion of like, what do we foresee using this feedback to do? Um, so not really like the content of it, but more of the, um, um, I guess the spirit of it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how, okay, wait, let me put the link in the chat. Oh, wait, she didn't give me a link. She gave me a, oh, I got to download it. Wait, how does that work? I can add a file in the chat? Uh, I believe so. Okay. If it's easier, I think she emailed it to everyone. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I would have, yeah, use a different source. Of so then um, you don't yeah. have to. Perfect. <laughs> I am the digital divide in the sense of like, I just don't care to know how to do things more technologically savvy. <laughs> <laughs> now I am the digital drug. In the sense of like, I just, I just don't feel like there are some people who just don't really desire to do more with technology and that's okay. So, um, yeah, two pieces of feedback, but I guess just generally like, what do we foresee um, doing with this information and how often we should check in with it. Um, so I'm going to acknowledge that I don't remember uh, the stated purpose other than like, oh, there should be another way for people to weigh in. Mm -hmm. I guess I made the assumption um, that I, I think I, and maybe this is probably a flawed assumption, but I made the assumption that uh, maybe it would be triaged a bit. So like, I don't, I don't think every uh, response that comes in this form is gonna neatly fall into a committee. I think if there, want, there are some that do, um, they should be, those committees should be kind of notified uh, I also would make the assumption that there are going to be things that just fall outside of the work of the board um, and or might be just kind of like ward related. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't know if. Why is um, Zachary calling me? Um, I don't <laughs> like we're in the meeting. Uh, Caitlin, can you let the president know that we have an advocacy outreach committee meeting? Um, the yeah so i don't but i think the the thing i don't know which is why i said it's probably a flawed assumption is who does that triaging mm -hmm. <laughs> like somebody has to look at it and go oh yeah like carlene i want to flag this for you because it's a word eight thing or fraser i want to flag this for you because it's a word four thing or um assessments committee. I want to flag this for you all because it's actually feedback around something you're already working on um, and any expectations we've set for responsiveness um, because it's also a little raggedy if um, people seek us out or take the time out to give input mm -hmm. and then it just hangs out there. Right. Um, and so I, I would assume that we need to set an expectation for that as well. Um, yeah, so so I, I think I'm just listing the assumptions I have um, to try to check them against what will actually happen. Yep, I think those are all like those are great. Those are questions that um, we need to, I guess, focus on. Um, I think the 
point of having this form was to give folks an outlet to um, reach out, but we also can see the themes of what what folks are reaching out about. Um, so maybe it could be like a monthly look at what information may be emerging from the form. Um, and then you're right, um, we're not sure who um, is going to be like sending the information to like, oh, hey, Ebony Rose, this was something that you might need to follow up with one of your constituents. Um, we didn't look to see if the committee was going to figure that out, that out or if um, SBOE staff is tasked to do that. So uh, questions that we can figure out, um, especially as you get more information, maybe because we just have two pieces of information. Um, and I know, I'm not sure if all members have shared it and use like, I know Ruth reached out. She's like, okay, it's ready to go. So um, maybe as we push it out more consistently, I think someone mentioned too, we need, might need to, Emily Gazoy, Representative Gazoy mentioned, we need to possibly announce it during our um, monthly meeting that this is something that exists. Okay, so. Um, um, the next question, Carly, yeah. sorry I came in a little late. Um, so I was thinking about this um, because we get a lot of calls that are related to like this form type stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, what I would love to happen is that we get fewer calls because they know that this form is available. However, on the other side of that, I think that when we get, cause some people just call us to complain literally on our main line. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if we should fill out a form for people, like when they call us to input the information as if they're submitting or either refer them to the form or submit one on their behalf, you understand, mm -hmm. um, for yeah. the cause. So if that is the case, then we can tell all of our staff, like, you know, we pick, we each have a day on the phones while we're working virtually, but that might be another way to um, kind of get more feedback because when they tell us, we're just like, okay, sorry, either we <laughs> either we can refer them to the appropriate office or it's like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I get it, but there's nothing I can really do for you. You know, so I was just thinking to run that by you and see what you thought. I think that makes sense. Like, I, I think, yeah, I think that makes, I, A, uh, I'm not surprised uh, that people call for a variety of things because they found somewhere to, you know, put their, concerns on the table. Uh, B, I think it makes sense to, uh, if if you all would be able to submit a form um, on their behalf, because most people are not going to, uh, if you tell them, hey, thanks for calling in, but you really should submit this form, then we're just not going to get the information and or probably by the time they got to us, they uh, are super frustrated and have probably uh, contacted a bunch of people so that that doesn't uh, feel great uh, in my spirit to tell them like okay don't tell us submit a form even if we can't do anything about it um, the C the last thing that makes me think of is like what is our um, if there's some type of tracking thing that we should implement on the back end just so we know if like things are addressed so like I appreciate uh, you sending us the spreadsheet I wonder if it's worth adding a column that we see on the back end uh, that says like okay somebody followed up with this person or uh it's already been um you know referred to office of the student advocate or um aussie or whoever um and i and i and and sorry as a result i wonder if at the end of the year those might be things we can pull for our own uh agency level data um yeah i, yes. I could see this being useful this would be actually a good time to to note that the staff actually fills out a call log form, um, and so uh, I'll just walk you through um, the questions that we have to fill out after we answer a call. So we have outcome of call, and we have like you know whether it's like transferred to DCPS, transferred to like um, PCSB, Aussie, the Ombudsman, Student Advocate, or the DCPS Online Request Portal, um, or we select other and then we de describe the details of the concern. Then we select the issue topic. Um, we do have some optional like call our name, ward of residence thing if they disclose it. Otherwise, we don't really ask. Um, and then we have SBOE staff who handled the call. Um, I know that John Paul reviews the calls like pretty regularly, um, and he sees like if there are any trends. But I think just seeing how you know this 
connects with the constituent feedback form, I think this would be a good time to ask John Paul if we could just share those responses with you all. Yeah, thanks, Caitlin. That, that makes sense to me. Cool. But that way you all aren't doing double work and maybe we could feed those things together. Like maybe, you know, maybe we have one thing that captures. Yeah, I like the idea. I think that conversation really kind of um, even more clarifies why we need that like triage process. Um, for instance, like I received a call from a parent and as I was talking, I was like, oh, you're not in my ward, but I was, wouldn't dare be like, <laughs> you're not in my ward, I can't help you. But I, it had some, I had questions in the back of my head, like it was like, oh yeah, you know, oh, it would work, like you're in, you know, what ward are you in? Um, and then they, the question was like, oh, well, I called the State Board of Education, it was referred to you. And I was kind of like, okay. And I would have loved to be able to go back and be like, okay, does this parent really call the State Board of Education or was it another body? Um, did they call Aussie? Did they call the Public Charter School Board? Did they call DCPS? Um, you know, because I just had a lot of questions that didn't really want to ask, ask the parent because they had, you know, concerns that didn't require me knowing all the logistics. Um, but it would just kind of be helpful to kind of know like, okay, where is information coming from? Um, so I can see that the value in kind of knowing um, where some of the calls kind of originate from. Um, Emily, to get you caught up, we're just talking about the constituent feedback form and we were just talking about process in regards to what do we do with the information and then Caitlin and Malaya were talking about like what does the form look like kind of on their end and then Ebony Rose mentioned um, just possibly some information on the back end to say this person's call was addressed. Um, this was a follow up if any. So that's where we were on that. Um, I'm going to try. I'm not sure if you have any elements to add for the constituent feedback form. Did are we still only at two respondents? Is that what? Yeah. 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 I just I wanted to just kind of look to see if like you noticed anything or had any just general thoughts about I guess the question for outreach and advocacy is what to do with it grant um, as we're starting to collect more information this form becomes more available I think right now there's so many surveys so many member calls emails that people don't really need to use the form because I think they're getting in contact with us <laughs> or using you know I social media it. yeah like I would hate to like be a parent who's like here's a survey from this group and here's our constituent feedback form to give me the same information um so i think it possibly could the use might uptick a little more uh if it might be later in the year when if some of the reopening stuff did individual um, members send it out or was it just from our office that it, it got sent out i think it varied yeah, because I, you know, I realized when I sent out my to do on Monday, I did not include it, which I could have, but it wasn't on my radar. And I realized when I heard back from Malayo that like we only had two responses. I was like, oh yeah, I, I to be to be honest, I didn't send it out individually. Um, I just retweeted it when I saw it and kind of forgot about it. So I think, um, yeah, it's good to talk about like <laughs> what do we. What do we do with it? Because I also was thinking I get, and this is probably what you all were just discussing at the state board level, but as individuals, we also get a lot of input, right? I mean, I think some of us anyway, get emails every day and I keep track of it, but I actually don't, you know, I'll follow up if it's very specific, but a lot of it is just like, okay, you know, like noted and I will, it informs how I, you know, respond when we have guests or, you know, how I ask questions or what we put in a resolution, but is there some way we want to compile it so everyone can see it? I guess that's something that I have been thinking about is like, is there a way that we can consolidate the input we're getting in our wards? So we can also see like where there's overlap and where there's things that are really specific to our wards, you know, I think that would be interesting and important. So those are my thoughts. <laughs> I mean, going to the question of like, what should we do with the um, feedback on the, if we do get more, I guess it's the same, you know, of like, do, should we create some kind of 
public facing and internal facing, you know, products that can be used. And it seems like that would be good. I just don't, I haven't put, wrapped my mind around what that might look like and what staff might have capacity for at this point. So. Cool. Um, so it seems like possibly um, maybe almost like the members have like a, uh, there's a common call log that, like I know Caitlin and Lyle, you're mentioning that you, John Paul, has you all log a log calls but i think some of the information that's coming directly to members is not being logged so maybe that's something that like whatever that general call log maybe there's a member tab or something that um can be added to that and we can kind of like oh email on virtual option email on school choice i don't know um those are the main ones right now for me <laughs> um third would be special education so um yeah, I think those those are great ideas. Um, alrighty, cool. Um, I think we'll get be, it'll become. You have something else? <laughs> uh. Yeah. Um, no, I just as you were talking, I was thinking. I don't know if this is just like one more thing, but I wonder if maybe like once a month or bi monthly, members would there be a semi formal process where you like, you know sort of, a, you know, you don't have to log everything, but just kind of look at what the the big takeaways are from your input over the last month or two months or whatever the period is and log it. So that way we could, you know, if there's something to discuss, we would be able to pick it up. This committee would be able to pick it up. So that's just a thought. And I don't know, you know, maybe that would just be something we do at the beginning of the working meeting, or it's something we do in this committee, you know, where we like reach out and say, okay, it's that time, you know, here's the form, please fill it out. So just a thought. Yeah, I mean, I, I, um, I'm going to assume, uh, at least it's given my own imperfections, that I'm not going to go back and do it. Either I'm going to do it, like I'm gonna submit the form as it's happening. Uh, I, can, I, think, I think that would actually be the most effective instruction for someone like me. <laughs> uh, it's like, all right, you know, you had this, like we would just submit the form on their behalf. Uh, I would think maybe as we start to see trends or if there are already trends that we suspect, maybe there's a drop down uh, question that we could add, which kind of uh, flags it as different things um, to make it a little bit easier. So then you don't have to triage it and then you can actually just sort the responses and we can better see trends. Um, like I believe it's a Google form, right? Um, that's really easy to do in Google forms um, and it'll come across really clear instead of us having to go back and filter through. Um, and that actually would give us some really um, probably some good data to report out as far as what people are reaching out to us about. Um, I do uh, think it's important to reiterate just like a, a share expectation as far as what the form, like what, what do we want to get out of this, right? Like I'm actually okay with just getting uh, two responses to this form, A, because we don't have a baseline, but also because I do think people are interacting with us a bunch of different ways. Um, and I would assume that most of the things here are gonna be things that uh, we haven't explicitly asked people to engage around. Um, and they're just like, hey, I need somebody to know. That's my, I think, but, that, but I recognize that as my individual expectation. Um, I don't know if I could say what our shared expectation is for this. Um, and I think that's important just because it, it, it matters for how we talk about it and how we um, respond to the concerns as a group, but also just like how we put it out there. Um, I'll probably, if I, if, if once we, well, I would like to have a bit of a shared expectation. Like I'll, I, this is something I would include in my newsletter easily every month. Um, and just have the same language saying like, hey, if you want to get in contact with the board around whatever, um, I will put it there. But I also want to make sure that I'm not saying something uh, that is not 
what we see as the purpose. Uh, so that would be my hesitancy around like blasting it just yet. Um, but I, 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 I think it's a good idea and I think we can get some good data out of it. I just don't want to be out of step. Yeah, maybe we need to, um, those are something we can revisit with the shared expectation around the form during our October working session, um, carve out some time just so we're all on the same page before we start getting more responses. Um, and then also to see how members feel like about logging individual calls per, per call, per email to document that. So thank you all. And maybe Ebony Rose, I know you need to jump off at three minutes in three minutes, um, two minutes, <laughs> uh, I guess quickly, Emily. Um, so the last piece of agenda item, I believe is the starting the parent advocacy. So have you thought about that? What's going on? No, rush. yeah, uh, I have thought about it over the last hour, uh, full disclosure. So, <laughs> and this is what I thought about. Um, so I first went back and looked at, you know, what we had put into our um, bylaws, which is not much. So, so there was nothing really helpful there. It was just like that we would have a, bi a bi-yearly parent advisory committee. And then I, was, I went and looked at what the state board has um, authority over and it's also vague. There's a bullet point in our roles and responsibilities that says um, parent involvement. So policy, policy around parent involvement. So then I looked at um, OSCE's site uh, around like what they have around parent involvement and what I found. So this is not obviously an exhaustive search, um, but what I found immediately was their compliance with ESSA around parent engagement. So there is like um, guidelines for all LEAs to follow around parent parent engagement. Um, so my question, I guess, for us to consider, and maybe, to, you know, I'll flesh something out to discuss next time, is, you know, would the purpose of our parent engagement um, committee be to hear from parents how that, that those guidelines are are or not being implemented in their LEAs, that would be one thing we could do. Um, and then kind of following up with recommendations based on what we hear. Um, and or it could really just be like a, a way for us to yet another way, kind of, you know, a good segue from the last conversation of collecting input from families just to kind of hear what is happening in real time for you and your schools. I don't see these things as mutually exclusive, obviously, like we could do both of those things, but that, those were the two, like, in, you know, I guess most obvious ideas that I had for like what the purpose of this might be. So that's it. Oh. <laughs> yes, and I think she heard the, the bulk of it. Um, yeah, so it, it, um, if I can summarize that, it sounds like we are trying to decide what we want to do with our parent advisory committee and how it just um, it will be unique from other parent advisory groups. Um, right, because DCPS also we know they have like their cabinets, and you know the feedback that I have heard from those is that they feel very like a lot of things with our school system, which is kind of like checking off a box. We did that, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm, I'm sure there's some families who might speak positively, but I have not heard that honestly. So, um, so that is, that is something like, how can we, we do not want to have that, you know, be the case for hours if we convene it. Um, but yeah, just thoughts on those two ideas for, purpose cool yeah um i i'll i guess well uh a few things a couple of things um not really necessarily related to like the process but i do think wherever possible i feel like a lot of times i'm not a parent but i feel like a lot of times it's in two parents it's you know the conversation I'm like want to seat at the table but then it's also like folks aren't listening 
Um, mm -hmm. And I think there are actually a lot of opportunities in our city for parents to provide feedback. It's the action piece right. that doesn't happen. Um, and so whatever we come up with, and I know we, we can't solve all the issues <laughs> that emerge out of education, but as much as possible that we, we don't just be a sounding board, but can just have really clear things about like, this is how whatever information we gather from these parents that we're going to take action on or, um, yeah, I just feel like I don't, I, maybe because I'm just meeting now, but like, I just want to make sure like, yeah, I think I already said it. Like, I think it's a lot of opportunities for people to have their voices heard. It's just that next component of why aren't we acting if we have enough people who are saying this is what they want or they feel is beneficial for their children or their needs or, you know, these themes that are emerging and, you know, it's kind of this constant conversation of we feel it's best, <laughs> but, you know, parents, families feel it's best for their children and their households and why aren't we pivoting or moving in a certain way based on their feedback. Um, so we can just be that unique body, that would be great. Um, so yeah, are, any idea in regards to like timeline for, you know, the establishment when we will meet, um, I know we, it's this school year, right? We start the group. I would need to have a conversation with John Paul about that. Um, wow. and so I will do that today. Um, <laughs> and also, um, I had a thought when you were speaking, you were saying, right, the action part. I agree, like that's super important. I think it's really important that families understand what our agency does and doesn't do. Um, so that's huge. I think that's really important that we have a really clear statement about, you know, both what it is our role in the ecosystem is and then what the purpose therefore is, which always, I mean, I, Unfortunately, I think it's just always to inform our advocacy and our um, recommendations because that's what we can do, you know, um, for the most part, unless it's about STAR or about standards, you know, but if it's about reopening for the most part, <laughs> we don't really have authority beyond pushing, you know, and, and kind of bringing your voice. So I think, you know, that's, that goes to the other conversation too, about the purpose of collecting the input is, you know, I think it's to inform our advocacy. Um, oh, I know what I was thinking. Also, John Paul keeps bringing up this thought related to the fact that we actually do have authority over policy related to parent engagement. I don't think, and I will ask him this question, like that the board has ever done anything with that authority. So I think I need to, we need to figure out what that might look like. You know, maybe there, that would be exciting, right? Like if we could assemble families with a real clear goal around actual policy, that would, that would make it really different. I so, so, so that's, I guess next steps, you know, and I will uh, talk with him today about it and get back to you and we can, we can discuss next time. I mean, we don't necessarily have to wait a whole month. We probably shouldn't speaking of timeline, yeah. but uh, <laughs> yeah, I think we can probably finish it in email. Um, but I just wanted to put this, that on this agenda. Um, yeah. The conversation going, but I think that clear and unique or well I think that clear expectation <laughs> that's also realistic what we can do and we have the purview to do I think that's that's the unique hook so looking forward to follow up on that um I feel like we don't well that's really it um, I'm not sure there's anything else um I also don't think you know it needs to be a long meeting just to be a long meeting um so <laughs> well, I should think that <laughs> I think you're I'm, I'm thinking that. Okay, cool. Well, great. Well, thank you. Um, enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I'm sure I'll see you via email or next week virtually again. Yep. Um, and just to clarify on the survey right now, we are not encouraging folks to send it out or it's kind of just like 
It can be sent out. It can be sent okay. out. Um, I just think we're right now we're just trying to figure out what to do with the information. So like we're actually happy that we're there are only two responses. I don't and we were what em, or what Ebony Rose and I were saying is that I think because so many parents have reached out to us just in different ways, um, it, it's like it would be weird to like and here's a survey, you know, or here's this constituent feedback form. Like I think there's just a lot of communication happening already. So I was thinking that once if some of the reopening stuff calms down or you know just a change in you know advocacy what's happening around advocacy um people might start using the form but i think right now people are just contacting um you know elected folks about uh what's going on um and it's just kind of weird to send like a constituent and so many surveys also floating around the internet yeah yeah um, and letters just a lot of things one more question actually before we jump off which is this other idea of you know pulling together our uh ward level input that is something I think I would raise with admin to sort of see, you know, what we would do in terms of, you know, structuring it. Is that something you think I should bring up at our meeting, which is coming up? It's not scheduled yet, but we're supposed, you know, it's we have one this month that it, that needs to be scheduled. Or should I wait till we discuss further? Yeah, feel free to bring it up. I think Kaylin and Malayo chimed in too, and they were kind of just saying like what calls look like on their end um, and how there's kind of already a method for collecting information um, and how that, what they do can be linked to the form. Um, so yeah, it might be just more at the admin level to kind of hash out like what's happened with John Paul too, of like what makes the call log different from the constituent feedback form or can they be married some way or what? So yeah. Go for Let me it. actually, Malaya or Caitlin, do you have thoughts on that idea of like how staff might handle, you know, a monthly download of, of or ongoing, as Ebony Rose was saying, input from our wards? Um, yeah, we can do a monthly report, I guess. Um, it is duplicative um, in a way. <laughs> it's basically just marrying our call log with this constituent form and putting it in one place. But it can be done probably on a monthly basis, maybe prior to each of our meetings. Or could we as, could the, the members actually fill out that form for our constituent? We could either- Yes, like, that's what we're saying. I think when you- okay. Right when you were getting on, like maybe we should be doing that on behalf of the constituency. When we get angry calls that we can't do anything about, like we would just fill out the form and yeah. submit. So, you know. That's a good idea. So, okay, I like that. I didn't know that. And I would feel like then I was taking action, at least on some level. You know what I mean? Like, as opposed to just being like, thank you for your input. This will inform my blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like great. <laughs> Um, I have no authority, <laughs> um, but yeah, at least then we, I, you know, I think it's, it is important. It's, you know, a real thing to inform our advocacy, but it also helps to give us perspective. I think if we can start seeing that there really is volume around some issues and others are just loud, you know? Um, I mean, I, I think we can kind of sort that out ourselves, but it might be interesting to see citywide if there are just like some issues that seemed really hot and they're actually like not that many folks uh, across wards speaking up. So I think that could be really useful actually. So where do we get that form? The constituent feedback form? Mm -hmm. oh, oh the, what you're saying our thing our yeah yeah, yeah. the link is there uh yeah, no i have that i thought you meant like there's like a pre-existing form that staff use that um, we use. i thought or i think well caitlin maybe even malai were just saying that john paul already has a um system for when people call the board of state board of education the office and how they respond i think there's like already a log um, so then I'm guessing like, yeah, either, I guess when we're called, we were just, I guess Emmy Rose and I were just saying like, we are also getting calls that doesn't make sense to like, say like, here's this form. So maybe like y'all are saying just, we can fill out the form while we're talking to people. 
Um, but I know there's all, I think there's already a process that they have when people call it's on their still out of log. So I guess yeah, I'm it's just, yeah, it's just a Google form too. I mean, I, uh, I was planning to like, just uh, me and Malayo talked to John Paul about what he thinks about, you know, combining the forms in a way, or even just like sharing the responses that we get, like what he thinks is like also the best way. Um, so yeah, I, I was going to message him and then get back to you guys. Okay. All right. I'm done. Thank you, Carly. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. With that said, uh, everyone enjoy their weekend and uh, we will see you around. And thanks for people for tuning in. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.